it was an article that Luke Mogelson wrote in The New Yorker that just a few sentences in had its hooks in me, in my heart and in my head, because I am ashamed to admit I didn't know about this SWAT team, uh, despite the fact that we have been at some state of war with Iraq, the United States has since I was in high school, and now I'm in my 40s. I was struck by the notion that if, if I didn't know this, then there's probably many people like me in this country that don't know this. So can I tell a story that maybe only people from that part of the world really know? And can I expose a broader audience to it and have the same effect on that audience that that article had on me? So that was really the driver behind it and the, the opportunity to show that there's so much more that we have in common than we have divisions. And the things we have in common are not only more numerous, they're more meaningful. And I felt like that SWAT team, SWAT team. what they were fighting for just typified that. They want the same things we all want. They want their family. They want safety. They want to be proud of their home. I kept going back to this idea that I hope I would have half that courage if I ever found myself in that same position. Those are the very same things I think I would be fighting for myself. It was the recognition of this shared humanity I was desperate to try and bring to a broader audience. The word that popped to my mind was surreal. In some ways, it's almost the best of both worlds because we were able to see it in huge movie theaters that were packed. So we were able to experience that. And now on the 26th, it's going to be in 190 countries there for you know hundreds of millions of people if they want to click on it. It, frankly, it's kind of hard to wrap my head around. It's hard to fathom. At no point did I think we were not going to be seen widely because I just think these guys and that crew made a movie that was something very different and something I was really proud of. But for it to work out the way it has, it's stunning. The, I like the expression, best of both words, yeah. yeah. It's like, I had the cinema experience being in uh, Venice, you know, with this story, almost I like, such a, a great festivals. It means the movie enters in history of cinema, you know, you gotta have guys like Antonioni and, and on and on and on till now, you know, so it means you made something, a film, something that makes history. It's different, it's modern, it's in, in time. So this is a great pride. And now having it on Netflix, I think of all the people in, in the world, in the Middle East, that work and don't have time to go to cinemas. They don't have cinemas. I, I speak for my countries, the cinemas are destroyed. A lot of places closed. So they're gonna see the film. And this is such a great, great thing. I mean, I can't even talk to people thinking like they're on the taxi working at night between shifts, they can watch it. I mean, it's a comfort for all these countries where they don't have cinemas, but they'll have internet. The, the most important thing for a film is to be seen. So I'm super happy. Before we watching that, for me, I was shaking. I don't know what to do. <laughs> to be in Venice, for me and for all of us, this is a big thing. And the big movie theater there, historic one, and all these people there, I'm going to see it the first time, the movie, and they're going to see our movie. It was really great moments. After that, I don't believe it. <laughs> That's why we start crying and this big hug. It was really, really nice. Joe and Anthony, for sure. It was everything I hoped it was going to be. It was the highlight of my career so far. I truly loved it. There hasn't been a day that's gone by since where I haven't missed it. It was just a wonderful time. And to be able to make a movie that, knock on wood, hits people in this way that I hope it does, I don't even know how to put that into words. As far as inspiration relative to this movie, and I had a whole list of movies and specific scenes that on Fridays during pre-production, we would get a little room at the Radisson and all of us would go in and watch the movie. We watched Saving Private Ryan, we watched- Gamora. Gamora was fantastic. Gamora, Gamora was great. Because I, I was trying to skew towards movies that were unflinching. That, that I wanted. We did watch Hurt Locker, and when Suhail came up, we were like, that's our guy. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's gonna be here shortly. I wanted this movie to have that same sort of DNA. As brutal as this is, you can't look away from it.
It's a great pleasure to work with them because when you meet producers like this, you meet people that take risks. I mean, I remember one of the first discussion I had with Joe and he was talking about the films and, and Jake after. And Joe was talking about The Godfather and then he talked about La N, La N, who is a, a great film. And I was like, oh, okay, the guy who does Avengers and Captain America, he likes La N, he loves it. And Jake talks about a small Belgian film who is called C'est arrivé près de chez vous, a black and white film. I was like, these guys are crazy about films. And for me, the artist in the way where when Matthew like a story like this and take a risk like this, we need producers like this to create films. That's how I think good cinema is made. When you have people that take risks and other people that just follow and do a great job. So yeah, from my point of view, I just have, yeah, they're great, great artists. It's unlike anything I've experienced in my years writing insofar as like there's genuine good feeling and they get things moving at the drop of a hat. The thing that has blown me away on everything I've done with Agbo is how quickly things move. That is really new to me because I'm used to the kind of almost the glacial pace of traditional projects that if you say you want to do something, you better be serious because they're going to start moving. And on this, I just think for me to have this notion that there's a way we should tell this story about the SWAT team is one thing. For Joe and Anthony and Mike to agree and say, let's do it, it's just unprecedented. I don't think there's anybody else in our business who would do this. And yet this, I think, is the only way you could have made this movie. So without them, this doesn't happen. And I don't know what more you can say about what somebody means to you than that. Like without them, I don't get to do this thing that I was desperate to do. I agree with Matthew. Without them, we can't do this movie. Nobody can take this trip. It's too big. All movie in Arabic with Arabic after, no way. I don't think nobody can do it, but they did it.